finished working on this picture and I thought a frame or border would just help to finish it off nicely because you tend to, with the bright spot up here, you tend to sort of wander off this area. But looking through the picture, I suddenly caught this uh, basket here, this sort of punched metal effect, and I suddenly thought, that's it, a punched metal style border. It's actually an effect I did do many years ago now on a couple of car images, so uh, I think, yeah, let's give it a try. Dropping down, we're going to put in a new empty layer, layer one. Let's just double click, let's call this, uh, what's going to call this, we're going to call this frame, it's going to be called a punched metal frame from now on. So in that goes, right coming across make sure you have got your default colors press D on the keyboard if you have got any other colors coming up we're gonna pick up the rectangular marquee tool coming into the picture I'm gonna click down I'm gonna drag it out into something like that that will be pretty good next coming across we're gonna pick up the bucket tool the fill tool dropping this in here we have now filled this with black but I haven't done a very good job centralizing this not to worry. Command D, Control D, or Select. Deselect gets rid of it. Select All, or Command A, Control A, so we've now selected this. If you pick up the Move tool, you can come across to the Align at the top here. And now clicking on the line, you can go to Vertical Center. That, you can see it drops it down a little bit. If you go to Horizontal Center, clicking on this, you can see it's... Well, all right, then didn't move, so I got something right. That's a first. Command D, Control D to deselect. Picking up the one tool, clicking in here with the one tool, we have now made a double selection. If we drop down to the little black icon, clicking on the little black oak icon opens our color picker for the foreground color. We're going to come in, I'm going to choose something in that sort of color range there, clicking OK. Once again, picking up our bucket tool, dropping our bucket tool in there, we've now filled this with gray. Leaving the selection in place, we're going to go to Filter, we're going to drop down to Noise, we're going to go to Add Noise. When Add Noise opens, if we just click on the sort of area here, we can see exactly what we've got. We've got 13.13, .13. you can see the way it's looking if you just click in the window. Uh, yeah, you've got the sort of uniform, you've got the Gaussian, yes, monochromatic is what we want, we don't want colour. So I'm going to leave it on this, but perhaps just drop that down a little bit and there it is, click OK to that. Next, filter, blur, go into motion blur, taking a look at the motion blur, again, bring your cursor out, you get that little square, you can click down, you can see exactly what it's doing. You'll notice the way that it's actually sort of blurring over the corners here. I'm not going to worry too much about that because I'm going to come to resize in this frame just a little bit later, but I'm going to drop the numbers down here for the distance of the blur to that sort of area there, 10. That looks pretty good. Again, this figure will vary according to the image size you're working on. The angle, yes, this is set on zero, which is sort of across there. You could set it in the horizontal as well, so you could go to 90 degrees, but I'm leaving it like that. Click OK. There it is. Nearly job done. Still got a selection. Filter. We're going to drop down to Distort, we're going to go to Glass, and when Glass opens, you'll notice that there it is there. Let's switch it to something else, because that's just sport, the whole surprise. If we switch it to something else, we have got Blocks. There are a tremendous amount of different effects that we can get from this one filter, the Glass filter, using Blocks and using some of the others, as we will see. It is brilliant. Try Blocks, try Canvas. Canvas is different again, quite an ornate, uh, slightly different to all the sides but it really looks terrific. White background, brilliant. Coming across, let's go to Frosted. Again, Frosted, you get some really good effects. Just try adjusting the various sliders, see the way it all works in together. The one we're after though, no surprise yet, you did see it earlier, tiny lenses, there it is. This is that punch metal effect that I was after. So let's come and take a look. Uh, let's come to the smoothness, take the smoothness uh, up a little bit. All right, drop it down a bit, that area there. Let's go for distortion and pull in the distortion. You can see we get some more little sort of punched metal effects, bit scale. Yep, making the scale makes it look a lot bigger. And coming into that area, quite like yeah like the look of that I'm gonna click OK through it goes right you may have noticed that we've got gaps in some of these holes we don't want that so we're going to go to select 
we're going to go to inverse. So we've now inverse the selection. I'm going to put in a new empty layer. We're going to come up to edit. We're going to drop down to stroke outline selection, clicking on this. I've got the color here because of course it's picked up the foreground color, so it's going to be the identical color. You can change it if you want to, but I'm going to leave it on that gray color. The width, 8 pixels, yeah, just slide it back and forth to get the size you want. For this size image here, 8 pixels will be fine. Oh, oh, make sure, yeah, location inside, click OK to that. In it goes, Command D, Control D. If I just switch this off, you can see there's the holes in the punch metal that I was talking about. Right, next. This is on one layer, the frame is on another layer, Command D, Control E. Now they're down together. Coming across, picking up the one tool, clicking in the center, we've selected the black. We're now going to come up, we're going to go to Select, Similar. You'll notice it now flashing all around the outside. If you press Delete on the keyboard, you will remove that effect, Command D, Control D, and there it is, there's the punched metal border. Let's come in, let's go to layer, let's go to layer styles, let's go to style settings. Now with style settings, I'm going to click on drop shadow. If we zoom in a bit as well, let's take a look at our border. If I just bring this up, you see that looks pretty good like that. If we just try the different, you can see the opacity working through the framework there. We can come to the size and we can play with this. Doesn't do a huge amount though, so I'm going to click OK. Let's sort of remove ourselves from that area. If we come back, if we double click on the effects, what we can now do is bring the cursor out. It now becomes the move tool. There is our drop shadow. It gives us a lot more to play with. We can position it like this. We can come in, we can change the opacity. We can come in, we can change the size of it. And it just gives us a lot more options when you double click on that effects. Right, let's click OK. Next thing, you will notice the way this has gone sort of slightly thin around the sides here. So let's take a look at correcting this and also, as I said, this does come from a question from somebody that said, can I just put the frame to the top and the bottom? The answer is, of course you can. Just zoom out a bit, use Command T, Control T, there's the transform tool. Coming to the side, press and hold down that Alt or Option key, so hold down the Alt or Option. Now when you pull it out, you're pulling it out by exactly the same amount to both the sides. So you might want to pull it out to something like that. You can pull it out, so you can take it out altogether. And there it is with a frame to just the top and the bottom. Quite like that. You can pull this in, you can have as much as the frame as you want on display. So something like this, you can come to the top on this. Still holding that Alt or Option, you can pull that out. And a thinner frame there, I think, looks really good. Double click into apply. There it is. There's the aboard border effect using that punched metal look. Go on, give it a try. Until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.